Hello, good evening. So we're going to give people a few more minutes to get here before we get started. I've been told that 7.05 is a good time to start. So people are starting to jump in now, which is great. But you're all very welcome. So I have all the sessions have been set to turn cameras and mics off, but I asked for this one to have them on in case you want to actually chat to me because it's so much nicer than doing it over the chat. Um, but feel free to turn them off if you'd rather not have them on. Um, and I'll do start with a little presentation and then um, open up the floor to questions. And we also have one of our current students coming in to chat to everybody as well. So uh, we will do that in a few minutes. <coughs> Good evening. We'll get started in just a few minutes. I'm just waiting for some more people to arrive. Around five past seven, we'll get started. You're welcome, those of you who just joined us. Um, I'll get started around five past seven. We're just waiting for a few more people to arrive. And I'll start with a little presentation. We also have one of our students joining us for a short while. And I'll also open the floor to questions, which you can put into the chat or can ask over voice, um, because I asked to have audio available for this session because it just makes it a bit easier sometimes. Um, but we'll get started in two or three minutes. I am going to just get set up with my slides and stuff. Um, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to put them into the chat or save them up for the end and you can just ask me in the chat or in person. Um, but hopefully I'll cover lots of what you're interested in and if not, you can ask me. Okay, 
So I'll get going. Um, if more people join, I'll let them in as we go. Um, so you're all very welcome. Um, this is the open evening for the Masters in Cyber Psychology in IEDT. I am Dr. Nicola Fox Hamilton. I'm the program chair for this course. So I run the course, do the admin, um, get make sure all our students are on board and everybody's OK. And you can also come to me with any problems if you end up being a student as well. Um, it's a fantastic course. I absolutely love it. I did this course in 2000. 9 to 2011 um, and I'll talk a little bit about my own journey um, in a moment but it is just such a wonderful course it has obviously changed and developed over the years because this area changes so much over time um, but it's still fundamentally um, the core of it is very similar to what I did back then so I'll talk through a few different areas. Um, so first of all, obviously, you know, what is cyber psychology? Um, and very broadly, it's the study of the human mind and behavior in the context of human technology interaction. So it's how we behave and how we think when we interact with technology or through technology, how we interact with each other through technology. And that ranges from, you know, basic things like how we communicate through WhatsApp to things like using VR for psychotherapy or for interventions in mental health disorders to the use of AI, problems with AI, benefits of it, to gaming, to lots of different areas. Um, the really fantastic thing about this course is that you can also tailor a lot of it to what you're interested in. So the assignments are a lot of the time very flexible. There's a few that aren't as flexible, but a lot of them are very flexible and you can make them what you want to be. Um, so the course itself has 25 places max. Um, we usually have in or around 20 students there about starting the year. Um, there is, I know, a line that goes out in the email to students that says if we don't reach the required minimum that the course won't run. That has never happened before. I think it's highly unlikely to happen this year, given the number of applications we've already had. So don't worry about that if you see it in an email after you apply. Um, it's a two year course part time. So in first years, it's Saturdays and Wednesday evenings. And in second year, it's just Saturdays. I'll talk a bit more about those hours in a minute. Um, there are minimum entry requirements. An undergraduate second class honours at higher honours degree, so level eight. Um, however, if you don't have that, you can um, demonstrate equivalent learning through your own working life and so on through the recognition of prior learning process. And I myself did that. So I had a level seven degree in graphic design when I entered the course. I went through the RPEL process and came out of the master's program with a first class honours. So it does not hold anybody back from doing this course. So if that's you, that's not a problem at all. Also, we get people from all kinds of different backgrounds. You don't have to have studied psychology previously at all. Um, so I'll talk about who our graduates are in a minute. But like I said, I was a graphic designer before I took this course. Um, and it was, you know, 2008, there was the recession, the Celtic Tiger crashed. And I thought, maybe I'll go back to college, do something different and interesting that'll add to my career as a graphic designer. And I went into an open evening in IEDT and was looking at a digital media master's and overheard Dr. Grania Kirwan talking about this master's in cyber psychology and thought it sounded an awful lot more interesting and was just completely hooked right from the start. And that was how I found my way into this. And originally I was thinking it would be really useful. And it was for a number of years as a supplement to my graphic design in terms of building, building brands online, communicating with audiences online, building community online and so on. Um, and I did use that as a consultant for quite a number of years. But what really interested me was all of the social psychology, how we interact, how we communicate with each other online. And in particular, I did my research um, for the master's, my final project on online dating. Um, and then decided to go and do a PhD and continued it on in that. Um, and that just fascinated me so, so much that I changed careers into academia. And here I am now come full circle and running this program, which is uh, not what I intended, but a great outcome. Um, so we get people from so many different kinds of backgrounds. 
and you don't have to have studied psychology. Um, the fees for the program, uh, the EU fees are 4,000 per year, so 8,000 total, and the international fees are 9,000 a year, and that's 18,000 total. The application deadlines, it's around the end of May is round one, so around the 26th of May, um, and then around the start of June, um, I'll look at any people who are applying through the RPEL process. You can apply earlier than that, um, we have already offered quite a few places to people, but there are still places available. There's a second round around the end of August, which the applications will be looked at um, then and the very start of September, subject to available places. There usually are a few, and even if there aren't, um, it's worth applying because sometimes between people applying in April and getting to the end of September, things can change in people's lives and so they might pull out or defer their place for a year. So there will often be places available at that point. Um, we kind of take applications until the course starts, basically, if the places aren't completely filled. OK, so about the actual program and what you will learn in it or what you what modules you'll take, subjects you'll take. In first year, we've got a number of core cyber psychology modules, and then we also have a research strand, and that runs into second year as well. You've got a number of cyber psychology modules and the research strand. So in first year, the first module is Principles of Psychology Online. It's a 10 credit module. I teach this one. And this is, it's a real broad introduction to psychology and cyber psychology. So we look at some kind of core areas of psychology, like communication, personality, um, motivation, um, what else do we look at? Emotion, a few different things like that, very, very broadly, and look at applying them to cyber psychology. And it's a really interesting one. For people who've never studied psychology before, it's an introduction to some of the core areas. For people who have, it's a chance to take those areas and really look at applying them into the cyber psychology area, um, which is great. There's a couple of different assignments in that that allow you to very much focus on what your interests are. Um, so it's quite useful. And there's also their group projects. So you get to know your classmates, which is great. The second project is Fundamentals of UX Design, which is a really, really useful module. Um, quite a few graduates of the program go out to work in the UX field or product design field. Um, so that's a really useful one. Um, and again, you get to know people because you're working in group projects. Um, then you've got computer mediated communication, which is all about how we communicate online, very core area of cyber psychology. And then finally, psychology of gaming and multimedia entertainment, which is a really broad module looking at gaming and entertainment and multimedia um, and a really, really interesting one. We've had a new lecturer for the last couple of years in that who's just fantastic. People love the module, even if they think they won't because they know nothing or aren't interested in gaming. Um, alongside that, so these are your Saturday classes. Alongside that, you've got your research strand, which in first year is your Wednesday evening classes. And that is the Critical Research Foundations, Futures and Skills module. Um, and that is taught by Dr. Liam Challoner, who is excellent at this module. Really, really fantastic. He gives so much support to the students. So this is the module where you learn about research methods, all the different kinds of methods you can use, how to apply them, look at critical thinking, look at APA referencing, all of that kind of stuff that you need. But you also develop your proposal for your thesis in first year in this module as well, with a lot of support and help from Liam. Um, so it's a really core module that's so important to being able to do your research project in second year. And then in second year, um, you go into social psychology of the Internet, which is all about how we behave around other people, how we interact with other people in groups and so on online. It's a really fascinating module. Um, and then persuasive design and cybersecurity. And finally, virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Um, very interesting modules. And then alongside that, instead of Wednesday evening classes, you're working on your research project and you're working on that in collaboration with your supervisor um, who helps you through the process of it, um, along with some workshops on different practical aspects like statistical analysis um, and qualitative analysis and so on. Um, so that's where you really get to focus on the project that you're interested in, that's your particular topic. Um, and it's so many different interesting projects. It's absolutely brilliant. 
So the classes at the moment, um, and I expect this to stay the same for the following few years, um, are Saturdays from 10 to 2.30. Um, five credit modules are run over three Saturdays, 10 credit modules are run over six Saturdays. There's usually a one Saturday break in between modules. Um, and then obviously if there's a bank holiday or anything like that, you don't have classes that Saturday either. Wednesdays in first year for critical research, um, are there's two kind of components to it. From six till seven, it's tutorials and labs. And from seven till nine, there's actually a class, a lecture um, at that point. Occasionally, there are people doing the certificate in critical research who join that class as well. Um, so yeah, that's the different modules. That's the class times. Um, I just want to make sure everybody's muted. Cool, there we go. Um, the classes take place mainly online. Um, so, you know, obviously like everybody else, we went to emergency online teaching during COVID. And after the initial shock of it and getting used to it, we found that it worked really, really well for this course. Um, because people are were traveling from Waterford and Cork and Galway. You know, we didn't have anybody from abroad at that time because that wasn't possible. Um, but since we moved the course primarily online, we have had people in Brazil and the UK and Germany and Dubai and all sorts of places take the course, which is absolutely fantastic because it brings so many different kinds of experiences into the room. Um, we do have some face to face sessions. So what we do, what we did last year or rather this year, we had two blocks of two days in person teaching. So we had a Friday and a Saturday in October and a Friday and a Saturday in February where almost everybody came on campus. Anyone who could come on campus came on campus and we live streamed it for anyone who couldn't. And actually our student in Brazil even came on campus for the second one, which was really, really lovely. So we had a few people online, mostly people in person, um, which was great. So it gives people a chance to get to know each other and socialize more in person, um, which is nice. Um, so it is possible to attend from outside of Ireland because everything is available online. Most of the lectures are recorded, not every single bit of every single lecture is recorded. So if we discuss sensitive topics, for example, sometimes we won't record that. Um, and occasionally someone will just forget to record a session. So that can happen. Um, we can't set them up to automatically record, unfortunately. Um, but most things are available online. And this year, thankfully, nobody's forgotten to record anything. So that's been good. Um, our classes are live, though they are not pre-recorded sessions. So being there in person is actually quite important. It's fine to catch up on a bit later. And we have had students catch up on quite a bit later. But to get the full experience of it, being there in person is a lot better. Being there live at the time that it's streaming is better um, because there's lots of activities. We don't just lecture for hours uh, because that's not very exciting, particularly when you're online. It's too easy to get distracted. Um, and I will say the schedule for the year, we usually complete it before June 20th when we break for the summer. And we will definitely have decided on when we're going to do our in-person blocks um, by that date. So if you want to pre-book flights or anything like that for coming over in person, you can do that at that point. Um, in terms of the assignments, we have no exams. It's all assignment based, continuous assessment based. Um, there's a really wide range of assignments, um, both group assignments and individual. The group assignments are mainly in first year. Um, not all of them are group assignments, but the first few are. And then it's mainly individual ones after that. Um, they are just not a whole load of essays um, because essays aren't really teaching skills that you can use outside of the in like at academic environment in the workplace. So they're not so practical. So we do a lot of things where you take the knowledge and skills that you're learning and apply them in a different way. So we get you to develop a wiki, to create a poster, um, to do different kinds of analysis. There's even memes in one of the assignments. So they're quite fun. They're really interesting. And like I said, a lot of them can really be tailored to your areas of interest. So, for example, in the first module in principles of psychology, people can take a core area of psychology. So let's say emotion, but apply it to any area that they're interested in. So we've had people apply emotion to bullying, to gaming and aggression, to um, online grief, like so many different topics, um, which makes it really, really interesting. Um, 
then this sec in second year, you, again, you've got your assignments, but you also have your research project. And this is very much driven by your area of interest. So mine was online dating, um, but we have people doing things on cybersecurity, on misinformation, on trust online, different kinds of marketing things, looking at how people can be persuaded, um, looking at gaming, virtual reality, like so many different kinds of things. Um, at the moment, I'm supervising one student who's looking at incels who are de-radicalizing themselves and another student who's looking at online dating, which is great. So just they're really, really interesting. We've had quite a few people in the last few years looking at COVID related research, um, looking at, you know, how nurses were dealing with having to um, help people interact with their loved ones through video chat. A couple of years ago, we've had lots of stuff on online working, remote working, how people feel about that, whether it um, is more productive, less productive, all sorts of things like that. So it's just really whatever you're interested in and um, guided by like ethics. So it's what you are allowed to do within your area of interest. Um, so you like I said, you develop your proposal for that in first year in the critical research module. And then in second year, you be assigned a supervisor who will work with you to develop your thesis um, over the course of the year. So the team at the moment um, are myself, uh, Dr. Nicola Fox Hamilton, um, Dr. Liam Challoner, who teaches critical research and CMC and persuasive and cybersecurity. Um, Hannah Barton, who did teach social psychology and may be back teaching it this year, but is also a supervisor. Derek Laffin's been teaching the um, gaming and multimedia entertainment module and taught social um, psychology this year. Um, Dr. Or Rob Griffin uh, teaches the VRAI and the UX module. And Dr. Gronya Kirwan and Sinead Mead are both uh, research project supervisors. And they're a really amazing team, lots of different skills across the team. So Derek actually works in DCU in the Anti-Bullying Centre, and he works with us part time. Um, Dr. Gronya Kirwan is the um, person who set up this course originally. She's fantastic. Um, so just lots of different people um, with great skills. So our students, like I said, come from so many different kinds of backgrounds, not necessarily all psychology. We usually have a few people with psychology, sociology backgrounds, um, but then everything from marketing to design in the creative arts, lots of people from tech companies, some of the big tech companies like Google and Facebook or Meta, um, maybe less so Twitter. I don't know how many people still work for Twitter, um, but lots of people like that. Lots of people from um, other kinds of IT companies as well. People who are interested in cybercrime, cybersecurity within IT companies. We've had people from education, both third level, primary school, second level, um, people from finance and other areas like that. Some of the big consultancy companies as well. Um, quite a few people from the media, journalists, writers, um, et cetera. And we've had a few UX designers, product designers, people from the creative arts, musicians, um, people working in gaming. So loads and loads of different backgrounds and areas. Um, and then, you know, people from things like the county council who are just interested in doing something different and shifting career, um, et cetera. So there's just a massive range of people. And the fantastic thing about it is that it brings so much experience into the room so everybody has expertise in different areas which they can share and apply to whatever topic we're talking about and that makes things really interesting i learn as much from our students as i do from teaching the content um, and where do they go afterwards so everywhere <laughs> because they come from such a wide range of backgrounds um, people apply what they've learned in the program in so many different ways. You probably won't find cyber psychology in, you know, if you search for it on LinkedIn in job listings. Um, we're not there yet. There aren't really jobs as a cyber psychologist necessarily, but the skills that you take from this can be applied in so many different ways. So it can inform your existing career. People working in IT, tech support, et cetera, a lot of them have gone on to do more cybersecurity kind of work. And there's lots and lots of jobs in cybersecurity. That's one of the big growth areas. People use it to laterally move within their career into areas that they find more interesting. Um, so for example, instead of working content moderation in a big company, they start to move into working on policies and more higher level concepts around that area instead of the actual content moderation itself. Um, lots of people change careers, like I changed career completely and a number of other people have done that. Um, and 
a few people go for further education in terms of going on to a PhD. Sometimes another master is in an area that's interesting and relevant and connected in some way. Um, but you know, we get people going on to a PhD every now and then as well, um, which I'm not sure that I highly recommend having done one. Um, it's it's an interesting journey. But if you're looking to work in higher education or if you want to um, kind of go further into research, then that can be a useful move to do. So I am going to open the floor to questions um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can actually chat to you. So feel free to put questions into the chat, but also please feel free to just chat to me. And Lee, one of our first year students, is going to be here in like five minutes. Um, so he'll talk about his experience a little bit and you can ask him any um, questions as well. Um, Shravani, can the course be completed in one year full time? No, it can't. It is a part time course over two years. Um, we don't have even the rooms in the Institute at the moment to run a full time program, unfortunately. But we are building a new building, so it might in future. I would quite like to be able to offer it full time as well. There isn't any financial aid available. Um, so the if you're in Ireland, there's some funding for people doing a full time master's, but not a part time one. And we don't have scholarships in IEDT because we're just such a small institution. We just don't have the financial capacity for that. Unfortunately, I wish we did. Uh, if I ever win the lotto, I'll set up a studentship fund for doing master's in cyberpsychology. Um, we don't have PSI accreditation and the reason for that is that you don't have to have a psychology undergrad to come in to do the program. It's a very broad applied program. And if we wanted PSI accreditation, we would need to do all the core subjects like cognitive psychology, social psychology in a very um, theoretical way. And we chose to make a much more applied course that a lot of people could take and use in a very applied way. Are there overlaps between the certificate in cyber psychology and the masters in terms of content? Yes, there are some overlaps for sure. So I also teach the certificate in cyber psychology, and that is a for anyone who doesn't know, it's a um, one year certificate course that runs. It's a level eight, so honors degree level runs on a Wednesday evening from seven till nine. So there's 20 um, classes. And it's an introduction to a lot of the areas that we would cover in the masters, but it doesn't go as deep into those areas as you would in the masters. So, for example, I would do two classes in computer mediated communication in the masters. You do three full Saturdays on that um, and go much more into the theory and the application of it. Um, so uh, some people take the certificate before they go on to do the master's and it can be really useful if you don't know what area you want to focus on for your research project, for example, because you get an overview of the whole field before you go into it. Um, so it can be useful for that, um, but there is some overlap, but not a huge amount of overlap. Um, and you can't take the credits from the certificate into the master's because they're at two different levels. It's level eight and the master's is level nine. Uh, so how many supervisors are available to students working on dissertations in year two? So there are how many people were on that slide with the team? There's six, seven, eight of us. But you get you get assigned a supervisor based on their research interests. So whoever is most relevant for you is the person that you be assigned. So if you're doing online dating, you're probably going to get me. Um, if you're doing something about online communication or incels or misogyny online, they're the kinds of things I've been getting in recent years. Also, things to do often with marketing um, will come to me as well because I've written book chapters in that area. Um, if you're interested in anything to do with forensic psychology online, that will probably be Gronje uh, or possibly Sinead as well. Um, Liam's multi-talented. <laughs> He's got lots of different areas, but if you did anything in cyberbullying, for example, that would definitely be him. Um, so lots of, you know, we, we allocate them based on interests, really. Um, on finance, any options for paying by installments? Yes, I I'm trying to remember if there's an option for three installments. I think it's two installments, one at the start and one in January each year. Um, there may be a possibility for three installments. Um, you would need to check with fees for that. So it's fees at IEDT.ie um, if you want to check that out. Um, 
more interest. Okay, so Francisca, more interest in the certificate. You already know if it's going to happen this year. Yeah, it happens every year. I always get enough people on it to run it. Um, so it'll definitely happen this year. It'll start at the either the very last week of September or the first week in October. Um, and it's a great course. It's a lovely course. Uh, Lee, hey, how are you? Welcome. So Lee Hurley is one of our first year students, so he's nearly finished first year and uh, he very, very kindly offered to come and just briefly chat about his experience. I pulled him out of class with Liam to come and chat briefly about his experience um, on the course, just to give you a sense of what it's like from a student perspective. So I'm going to allow him do that so he can go back to class and then I'm going to ask uh, answer the rest of the questions that I see in the chat there, if that's OK. Um, yeah, actually, that's my, I think my internet has died. Oh, God. Oh, I can still see you. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay, I couldn't, you were all frozen for a minute. Um, uh, yeah, I, it's been, a, it's been a really enjoyable course. I, I come from a background completely different. Um, I did my undergraduate in uh, astrophysics, so entirely numbers related and absolutely no writing whatsoever. Um, so it, it was a, a definitely a, a shock to the system finding out like you have to reference everything and you can't say anything about it a reference. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's been really, really enjoyable. And um, if you're interested sort of in anything from, you know, the psychology behind online dating or the psychology behind any kind of social media um, or any form of basically technology, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, the psychology behind uh, health sciences, uh, you know, literally everything from, you know, why people wear Fitbits, uh, how all this data is stored. Um, it's it's literally anything to do with the Internet and, you know, uh, our sort of how our psychology is formed in relation to technology. So that's basically what it's about. And um, if you're coming into it from a psychology background already, um, you'll definitely know a lot of the things that I didn't know, um, like referencing styles and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but even if you're not, uh, the lectures are brilliant. They're so helpful. They'll tell you anything you need to know. I, Honest to God, I didn't even know what APA was when I started. I didn't even know there were different types of referencing. Somebody said to me, there's like seven of them. I was like, what? What is this? <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, you'll get all the support you need. You, you literally couldn't be coming from a background where you know less than I did at the beginning. Um, so anything you need um, from the lectures or from uh, the course, the college, they're, you know, they're so helpful and they're so welcoming. So, I mean, in that regard, you'll definitely get everything you need. Um, I have learned so much um, just even thinking about like how, you know, how people use Facebook and, and the different kinds of, um, you know, you basically it's psychologically beneficial if people are posting and reading, but then, you know, if people are just lurking and just reading other people's posts and not taking part, it's a different side. Um, it's, a, it's a different kind of sort of emphasis on how people use social media. And it's in the using of it, say, for example, that would help it to be um, good or bad um, uh, from a social perspective. So it, it's, it's really interesting. Um, and I know if you do the course, you'll definitely enjoy it. Um, I suppose, look, if you've got any questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask me. I've, I literally did just come off with Liam, so I'm going to hang on um, here anyway for a little while. So if you have any questions uh, in relation to, you know, what you think of the, uh, you know, anything about the course or from a student perspective, you'd like to know something, um, I'm going to hang around here. So feel free to put them in the chat and Nick will shout at me. <laughs> In a very nice way, in a very nice way. <laughs> of course, always nicely, always nice. <laughs> I presume you can see the chat, can you? You're muted, so I don't know, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> It wouldn't be as, uh, it wouldn't be an online session if somebody didn't forget to unmute themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's so I'm so used to being muted and getting listening to you guys talk. Yeah. Um, I'll let there's, me have a read through one, of the. Yeah, there's one sorry, question there for you. What's your area of your research proposal? It's actually written in the past tense, but Lee is literally writing it at the moment. I would say. <laughs> 
Yes, literally writing it at the moment. Um, I'm interested in uh, doing cyberbullying. Um, so that's what I'm looking at at the moment. Um, I it, it, This was really hard for me because, because everything was new, I was finding everything so interesting. Um, I wanted to do it on online dating at one point. Um, and then I went and I wanted to do it on game transfer phenomenon, which is basically just like for anybody who's ever played a video game, um, you know, like uh, uh, Super Mario, for example, you know, the music in Super Mario. Everybody knows the music in Super Mario if you've ever played it. Um, so whenever you hear that tune, just the thing that jumps into your head is, oh, I've got to go play Super Mario. So it's about like how sort of real life events make you think of playing video games and how that can sort of be good or bad. So I literally jumped from gaming to, um, you know, uh, online dating to aspects of social media to cyberbullying. Um, and I, I honestly, I still I still don't really know. <laughs> but officially, it's cyberbullying. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably need to be deciding right now because like it's due pretty soon, right? <laughs> well, it can be I, I, really I'm difficult, definitely... though. <laughs> I'll definitely be writing it on cyberbullying. I may reserve the right to change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually one of sometimes one of the most difficult things about the course is that there is a lot of freedom to choose what you do in your assignments. And if you're not there because you want to get into cybersecurity or you're working in a marketing background and you want to do that, there's so many interesting areas. Like I intended doing something very specifically related to my design background and ended up doing online dating and just going in an entirely different direction um, because it was just so much more interesting. <laughs> so that can be that can be a challenge sometimes just picking, narrowing it down. Um, OK, so I have a couple other questions here, not for really now, more general questions. Um, so is there any overlaps or connections with other courses in IDT electives and so on? No, there isn't not kind of formally um, there aren't electives or anything like that. We do have that in our undergrad programs, but not in our postgrad at the moment. Um, if you wanted to collaborate on a research project with somebody else, we could potentially talk about that. We haven't had anybody actually do that yet, um, but we could potentially look at that. Um, but there's also the possibility of just chatting to people from other courses, lectures from other courses, if you wanted to arrange to chat to them or go in to visit a class or something. I'm sure we could arrange that because um, there's a bit of bit of freedom in that. Um, and we all know each other because it's a small institute, like there's only 200 or so staff members. And um, so we pretty much all know each other. Um, if you'd like to chat with any of the staff pre-application, can you arrange that? Yes, just drop me a message. I'll be the person to chat to. Um, so, yep, yeah, we can do that. Um, and if there's somebody else specifically that you wanted to talk to, so people like Derek doesn't actually work in IDT most of the time, so that's probably not possible because he's working full time elsewhere. But if you wanted to talk to, say, Liam or um, somebody like that, you could do that. Um, how are you, if you are connecting to this new domain for your background in uh, to, this new domain to your background in astrophysics, Lee? Um, yeah. Um... Sorry, the Shivani. Sorry, I'm destroying your name there. Um, yeah, um, it's absolutely totally different. Um, it, it like obviously certain elements of my undergraduate have been very useful. Um, you know, it, 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 like in certain senses, like um, I know a lot of people are struggling with sort of the the results sections and and reading the statistics and the uh, the methodologies and things, which I'm not struggling on but are not struggling so much, say, and I understand the scales and I understand, you know, um, we're going to be doing SPSS next year, which is a, a statistics based system. So uh, the numbers aspect will definitely help me um, next year and in tabulating results. But the, the actual background of cyberbullying is, is not going to be related to astrophysics whatsoever. Um, so it's it's totally new um, and it's totally different. Mm. Thanks. I think you'll be the one of the few people who won't be struggling with stats and your classmates will be so happy to have you in the class. So we get lots of people coming in who've never done anything with stats before. I was the same um, and that feels very challenging. Every single person gets through it. 
So that's something we, we have lots of support. Lima is really fantastic for supporting people through that. Um, so if you're worried about that, don't worry. You can always do a qualitative research project if you're really terrified of stats. Um, so it's not a problem at all. OK, do we have any other questions? I also have a video if you're interested and you can let me know in the chat. Um, one of our graduates from a couple of years ago now, um, Jennifer, works for works as a product designer, um, product researcher, sorry, not designer. So she does, um, she's applied all her skills in a research sense. Um, and it's really interesting how she's taken the different skills that she's learned in the program and brought them into this new role for her because it wasn't what she was doing originally. Um, so I have a video, I asked her to do a graduate talk for us and she actually gave me a pre-recorded video and said that I can use it for something like this. So if you're interested, I can play that for you. It's about 10 minutes. Um, I can do it in the last 10 minutes of the call if you still have questions, but I can do it now if you don't have any questions. And if you're not interested, you can jump off the call or put more questions in the chat for me. And if you are interested, you can uh, have a look and have a watch of it because I think it's good to get some graduates experience of the program as well. So at the start of the year when we do induction for the masters, we tend to bring some graduates in to give kind of talks about what they did for their research and how they're applying what they did in their jobs now or in their lives now. Um, so I think that's quite interesting as well. So let me just share my screen here again. Cool. Um, and I'll answer this question before I start it. Do students have any access to infrastructure um, virtual? Yes. So pretty much everything that's available to students on the ground is also available to students virtually. We have a full suite of student services, including counselling. You can't see the nurse online or the doctor online, but you can access the counsellor online. The um, student support services for reading, writing support, math support are all accessible online. Um, if you have dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, anything like that, um, or ADHD, autism, anything like that, there are services available. There's also access, um, accessibility services available. Um, we have the library where actually the most useful cyber psychology stuff is all online. There's not that much in person. Um, our, all our books are ebooks uh, for the most part and the journals and all of that are all online access anyway. So being there in person kind of doesn't really make that much difference for that. Um, what else do we have online? Pretty much everything. Um, so yeah, it's great. It's, it's what's made it possible. COVID, the silver lining of COVID, which was awful, was that an awful lot of those services went online and made this all possible, which I think is really great. Actually, maybe Lee, before you jump off, you might just briefly talk about what it's like studying online for this and whether you've been able to get a like a sense of community in the class and that kind of thing, just quite briefly. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, a lot of the stuff that you're going to be um, uh, looking at is is available online, uh, like uh, Nicholas said. Um, and if there's something like, say, that you have a problem with that you're not able to get, um, I mean, the lecturers are always able to um, recommend uh, an alternative or or get the thing for you. If it's in relation to, say, a paper or um, uh, most of the, the papers and stuff and the previous research, you can access them uh, through the university. Um, so, you know, Sage or, or uh, et cetera, all those publishers, you, you, you tend to have access. But if you don't, um, I mean, you can always yourself email um, the, uh, the, the researcher and usually they'll just actually send you a PDF copy of it. I've done that a few times. Um, or you can let the, a lecturer know and, and um, they'll, they'll uh, look into getting the paper for you. So the 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 materials are all generally available um, online. Um, as for like the community and stuff, um, you know we have a, we have a great community in our class. Uh, we have like a WhatsApp group that we're always talking in, um, and everybody helps each other. Um, it's very much a a, a combined learning um, experience for us. Um, we also did uh, two in person um, meetings, which are also available online but you can uh, essentially get a chance to meet your classmates in person um, if you want to take uh, the time to make a trip or whatever. And we have guys who have come from, you know, uh, different parts of Ireland and Wales and England, 
Um, I think there was even a girl in second year who came from South Africa this year. Is that right? Um, so Wait, she came from Brazil. Like, <laughs> she came Brazil. from Brazil. Yeah, yeah. sorry, Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of people like make sort of make those trips, you know, kind of on a one-off, certainly if they can. Um, just because of the community that you build, you want to meet these people because, um, you know, they they essentially become you know friends. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, the online experience uh, has been um, really good and. Um, certainly, uh, I think it works quite well. So, brilliant! Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and our certificate program also has people from all over. We've got people in the course this year from India, Dubai, Australia. Although that time difference is not fun. She comes online at two or three o'clock in the morning, which isn't great. Um, but she's there every week, which is very impressive. Um, so yeah, we can accommodate a lot of people. We used to get people traveling from all around Ireland and they would do it two times a week in first year and, and once a week in second year. And it was a lot. So it really suits a lot of people. Um, is it possible to drop in and look at the labs department prior to starting SPSS, etc.? Um, we don't have a dedicated space, so it's kind of not like you can come and visit the campus. And if I'm there, I'll show you around. Um, we share our rooms with other courses, particularly the psychology course, it's mainly just a room with like computers in it. There's there's not it's not terribly exciting. We are setting up a new lab space with all of our gaming gear, VR gear um, and a, te a dedicated testing space. So we've been trying to get it for a few years and the psychology program and us have got it and it should be operational from September, but it's not actually there. It's just an empty room at the moment. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I feel guilty for asking this question first, knowing what impression it leaves. But when are the college holidays? Ireland has different holiday periods than Austria. Um, and that is really important and really relevant. Um, so Christmas usually is from somewhere around the 10th to the 14th of December until the first week of January ish. It depends how it falls. Um, the summer break is quite long, so usually by the end of April, you're done with all your assignments and you're not back until kind of the end of September. The, this course in first year starts around mid to end of September because induction takes a little while before you get into classes. Um, there's also a midterm break in October, another one in February. There's a couple of bank holidays. Easter break depends on Easter, but it's usually a week before Easter and a week after Easter. It usually falls with the school holidays. Um, if you have Easter holidays in Austria, I'm not sure if you do. Um, we do have the academic calendar for next year, which gives all the holidays. So if you want to drop me a mail, I can send you the academic calendar so you can actually see when the formal holidays are. Um, and we'll be working around those. So if that helps, I can definitely help with that. Um, at least it's soon. <laughs> not for us. We don't finish until June 20th. We have a while to go. Um, brilliant. Okay. Cool. So any other questions that come in, I'll answer in the chat while I'm playing this, but I'm going to go ahead and play this so we have time for it. Um, but in case any of you drop out during this, thank you all so much for coming and for your really great questions. And hopefully we'll see some of you in September. It'd be lovely to see you there. OK. Hello, my name is Jan Murphy, and today I'd like to share my experience from the Cyber Psychology Master's Programme at IADT. I learned from this Master's and how I use these learnings now in my role as a product researcher at Intercom. To get into the Master's, let me tell you a bit more about my background. So before completing the Master's in Cyber Psychology, my undergrad at IADT too studying applied psychology and um, this is where I was first introduced to the top psychology uh, within the module led by Dr. Vanya Kieran in our first year. But I have always made it with how people communicate and mostly how people communicate when technology is around, whether that's communicate with you online or how devices affect how we communicate with each other in the real world. I'm now a senior product researcher at a company called Intercom, where I've been for about five years now, basically still fascinated about how people connect and communicate and still getting to do research on it. Before I jump into what I learned and how I apply this in my role, I'd like to give you a quick intro to what Intercom is and a bit about my role there. 
So Intercom is a customer communications plot that allows businesses to communicate with their customers or users, everything from sales to marketing and engagement to court. So you might have come across Intercom yourself if you've had an issue with a business and you reached out through a messenger or to get that resolved. When I first heard about Intercom, I had just finished my undergrad and had already got my master's program. I remember being super excited about applying for an internship there when I saw the messenger here on the It changed a lot since I started, but what I immediately noticed was all the things I was fascinated about from cyber psychology. In this messenger alone, I could see how there was such dependency on nonverbal cues, emojis, photos of real people, bots. It had real-time synchronous messaging as well as asynchronous these concepts I'd explore in the masters through different modules, get to deep dive into them in my final research and continue to investigate them now in my role at Intercom. So my role in a nutshell is to help make evidence-based decisions about our product. This means I conduct research to inform product decisions such as what should we build, how should we build it and even when should we build it. The majority of my role is listening to this is listening to the problems of our customers who use our platform to speak with their customers or listening to people who have to come is or what it does but need to be able to use our messenger to get in contact with the business so my journey to a product researcher actually looked a bit more like this um i like many of you was studying and work started as an intern at Intercom just before I joined the master's program and then continued to work throughout while it was uh, and challenging given the nature of what I do and the industry I work in the flexibility of this program and what I could directly apply to my work so maybe it wasn't really a timeline but maybe more cyclical actually learning about psychology online concepts of computer mediated communication and then getting to apply them directly to my role in my work in real time basically what i'm saying is what i learned and how I did or how it was taught has direct applications to my role now so the first obvious is the topics we studied I've always been fascinated, like I said, with how people communicate, but it was my first year at in CMC that sealed the deal for me. I knew given I worked with messengers and chatbots and instant messaging, probably end up doing a research project along those lines. So my first project or my final uh, research project was called Red, very catchy title, obviously. And I was interested in understanding how individuals form expectation perceptions of response time in mobile instant messaging apps. So basically, when you send someone a message app or Viber, how do you form the expectation of when they're going to reply? And what is your perception of this time? Is it too long, too short? And how do you form those perceptions? Uh, so this is actually really, really, really clever because I would cover in my role now. We always have questions of how we can set better expectations of response time. It's particularly important for businesses that are providing customer support through our messenger. So when you reach out through live chat, I'm going to get a response back from the company. And how do you know this? So to enable this kind of expectation setting, most have what you might call response indicators or online indicators like displaying when someone types, like the little bubble, uh, showing online or offline statuses, profile photos of real people to kind of make it feel like they're, or like actual response time estimations and so on. And I don't think I would ever have known what they and how they might affect people's behavior prior to this course, particularly the CMC, the Computer Mediated Communication. So I think one really important thing that I can apply right now from what I've learned is the language and the concept to be able to explain, articulate, and sometimes even predict how people would behave with intercoms mess based on the, the topics that I studied in uh, the cyber psychology masters. The second very obvious application is uh, research practice. So my undergrad in applied psychology was a great base for a lot of research practice, but the masters is where I really got to amp this up. What I learned about research methods, planning and reading are things I do every single day and every single week in my role. 
in my role now, I, I'm nearly a qualitative researcher. I spend the majority of my time interviewing people and this program really helped me hone the bone projector. So for my final research product, project, I did a qualitative research study using semi-structured interviews and then used thematic analysis. And the only difference in this um, to my role now is that this is just done much faster. Um, so this is weeks, not months, but it's nearly exactly the same. Um, I think the programme gave me the to understand maybe what methods I should use to answer questions and a really solid framework to use for my planning and work. Um, there are also other things beyond research, I think, that are, are kind of different about this programme that really set me up for success in my role at Intercom now. But this in particular it is very, very relevant. Um, collaboration is probably the, the, the how, like how we learned. Um, I don't know about you, but I used to dread it. It felt like so much effort and coordination. And looking back, I'm actually so glad that we have plenty of chatting groups in this programme, because this is actually how the real world works. You have to collaborate with people. So cool about this programme, though, is that you get people from so many different careers and stages and backgrounds, and they to learn from kind of outside your own little bubble, your own little world. They bring something different to the table and you can learn from their experience and together on tackling a problem. In my role now, I can honestly say I have never done a research project operating with someone. And this collaboration often spans different departments, meaning I still get to work from others uh, with different backgrounds to my own. So I think the programme really offers you, I guess, a chance to experience others from different backgrounds, different careers to solve problems together. I think the final thing that stands out to me from my experience in this program is just the amount of freedom, I guess, you are given to be creative. I know there are lines and rules within research methodologies and your assignments have certain criteria, but beyond that, it's kind of up to you. The field of, field of cyber psychology in particular is pretty new when you think about it, and you've just got this space and freedom to live in it, and I don't think many fields can say that. I also think the different types of assignments, you get the opportunity to be creative in new ways. Like I remember, for example, I think it's the online gaming and multimedia module doing this assignment. I tested the use of music in advertisements on emotional response. It was one of the John Lewis like Christmas ads. Um, but I think just the possibilities are endless. Um, now that we have like technology and the internet is, is so prevalent, that there's ways to do everything and anything. And therefore, there's new problems to explore or uh, new opportunities. Um, so I think my role now is probably one in the methods that I use and how how I tell the stories and of my findings. For example, research study, I use videos to portray a problem, keeping together customers telling their stories and allowing them to speak for themselves. So I think all this freedom and creativity was something I definitely learned and cherished from, from this programme in particular. So that was a very, very quick story of what I learned and my experience in the Cyber Solid Psychology Masters. I encourage you all now to reflect on what you're learning right now and challenge yourself to think beyond just the direct application or module to your work or your future career. I know my role is working in a very close industry and on very similar to my study, but I guarantee how you are learning is different than other programmes. So think how you are learning and how that can be applied to what you do or you want to do. Thank you much for listening. I hope this is useful. I know it was super quick, but if you do have any questions, my DMs are open on Twitter. You can find me there at Jen underscore Joe Smurf. Thank you and best of luck with all your studies. Okay, so um, Jen's a really good example of one of our graduates. Um, like I said, we've people go into so many different areas. One of our recent graduates from last year has set up her own business and got funding for an AI mental health app, um, which is really exciting. Um, and we've had people in lots of different areas. We obviously know a lot of our graduates. We've got relationships with them in various areas, but we don't have formal links with industry because we don't do anything like work placement. Because people come from so many different backgrounds, it's pretty much impossible to do something like that. Um, but if we can help, we will. 
obviously. Um, thank you for all your questions. Um, are there exams at all or all assignments? It's all assignment. There's no exams at all. Um, it's assignment and the research project. And the research project is quite a big assignment. So there's 90 credits overall for the masters and 30 of those credits are for your research project. And it's a six to 8,000 word thesis. So it's quite a short thesis, huge amount of work that goes into it. And it's actually much harder to write succinctly than it is to write really long theses because um, there's a lot to fit into that. But it means that it's more publishable if you would like to publish it. Um, and if it's of a level to be published. So we've had a number of students publish their research when they graduate, which is great. And a couple of them in process at the moment. Hopefully we'll get those submitted over the summer. Um, Nicola, just I was going to say yeah. in relation to the just the person who was the, gave a question, I can't see it now, um, gave the question uh, just about asking about um, the time zones and the lectures and et cetera. Um, so uh, I work on one of the lectures is Saturday morning, our time. Um, so it's Saturday morning to sort of afternoon and I work until 12 on Saturdays. So I kind of missed half that lecture, but um, all of the lectures are available uh, on Teams to to review them. So if you do miss them, you can always go back and, and look at them. Um, so uh, and, and they give you all the details uh, on Teams as well in relation to, you know, what kind of course material you should be reading in relation to the lecture that you just listened to, etc. So you can definitely go back and do it. Um, but yet, I think we've lost them. Yep. I think he's having some internet issues. We'll see if he comes back. Um, but yeah, that you can catch up on a lot. If you know that you're going to miss, you know, the entire of Wednesday evenings, that will be more of an issue because it is a very interactive module. And Leem is there to get your ideas for your research project, help you develop them. You work with your classmates to do the same. There's a lot of interaction in that. So if you know that you just would never be able to make to make it to those, I think that would be quite difficult unless you've got previous research experience. So if you have a psychology undergrad and you're confident in your research abilities, then you could maybe catch up. If you have no research skills and you know you can't make those classes, I think that would be extremely, extremely difficult um, because that is the kind of foundation for everything that we do. Um, but otherwise, like catching up on Saturdays and stuff, we did have a student who worked shift work as a mental health nurse and was never available on Saturdays. I actually never met him in person, like online or offline. Um, I didn't know what he looked like until graduation, um, but he caught up on everything on the Saturdays and got through everything and did really well and graduated and did great. Um, he probably missed out on some of the social community aspects of it because he didn't know people as well, but he came and did what he needed to do and got the degree and was happy with what he learned. So um, it is possible to do that. All right, so it's eight o'clock and I'm sure you all have fun things to be doing and getting on with this evening. Um, thank you so much for all your comments, for your questions. Uh, good to see the enthusiasm about the course, yeah, from the staff and the students. Like everyone, pretty much everyone who graduates enjoys the course a lot. The lecturers love teaching it. It's such an exciting topic. We're all very passionate about it. I absolutely love cyber psychology, even after doing a PhD, um, which is quite something. You have to really, really love something to still love it after doing a PhD. Um, so yeah, hopefully some of you are excited to join us maybe in the next year or two. Um, if you have any questions, drop me a mail. And if you want to have a chat one to one with me, we can also do that. Um, and thank you very much. All right, have a lovely evening. Take care.